Hey, Tootie's! It's Psychic Bob! Well, look, here I am, and have I got a surprise for all of you. So many of you have been writing and asking about Mom and saying you've been praying for her, and I want to say thank you for the prayers, and look what I got for you. <gasps> Hi, everybody! Mom's back! <coughs> and Just great. for the day! Just so that, yeah, we thought she might be able to come home for like a week, but they're saying that she has more physical therapy, so they're letting her come home for the day. But this is good. She's going to start being here more regularly. But she's here, and how you feeling today, Mom? I feel good. That's good. Well, everybody here at Spirit Channel has been praying for you, and they are just had to ask. They've been asking to see you. I feel good. Good. They treat me well at the rehab and at the nursing home. I can't complain. Good. Well, I tell you guys, I saw her walking today. It's amazing. How's your new hip feeling, Mom? It feels good. I have no pain. Only pain I take is at night time. Isn't that wonderful? And she's got titanium in her. You guys may remember the other week we talked about the metal titanium. I showed you my titanium rings. Well, you have titanium in you, don't you, Mom? Yes. Yeah. See, she got the powerful one. Now she's going to start seeing UFOs. I'm telling you, that metal draws aliens to you. <laughs> Anyways, guys, well, we're going to have our spiritualist class here, but I had to bring Mom and let her say hi. Hi. <laughs> All right, guys, keep it here. We're going to have our class here in just a minute. All right. Thanks so much. Well, Tubies, it is so awesome that Mom is here for the day, and she said, I want to sit in and listen to your class. So we're going to have our spiritualist class today. We are not going to have our seance today because of time constraints. I've got stuff I've got to do with Mom. So today's going to be a little shorter, but you know, I promise you we get in at least a class today. Now, for those of you guys who remember, we are following, we're covering right now Sylvia Brown's book, The Mystical traveler. So if you are uh, new here, this is something we've been doing for the last few weeks. We're not too far into it, so you can catch up. Uh, but I might encourage you to see the last, you know, three or four weeks where we started it on this book. So we're going to continue uh, with reading of this book today. And I'm going to share with you some, some things that may help you along the way. By the way, you may ask, you, know, you always ask about my jewelry. Today I'm wearing my blue Italian cross. This is Millefiore glass from uh, Milan, Italy. And it's a little blue cross with little flowers. In it. Isn't that great? And as many of you know, the blue cross is a traditional symbol of the spiritualist movement. Now, those of you over in the UK, you, you probably can confirm this, that in many of the spiritualist churches there use the blue cross. It used to be more common in the United States, but now a lot of the American churches are using the sunflower. But the blue cross is a traditional symbol of spiritualism, and that's why I'm wearing that today. So let's go ahead and continue on with The Mystical Traveler by Sylvia Brown. I really would encourage you guys, you know, I'm not being endorsed by Sylvia Brown Corporation, but I would encourage you to get this book. You can buy this over at Amazon.com or on eBay. You'll get a really good price on it, okay? And that'll help you follow along with our class each week. Today we're going to talk about life themes and the mystical traveler, okay? This is on page 8. So as I told you, for those of you who haven't uh, got to get this book, we're not so far into it that it'll be hard to catch up, okay? So, but if you don't have the book, that's okay, and you can't get it, just listen along each week. We're going to cover a lot of this, okay? All right. Life Themes and the Mystical Traveler. When you accept the mantle of the mystical traveler, you may see changes right away, but it will also take a good year for it to sink into your soul as well as rid yourself of old wounds and bad memories from all of your lives. In addition, you must make a concerted effort to keep giving up your will totally and unconditionally to God. The human part of you can have doubts about being able to do so, especially when you start asking yourself, but what if God's will is against everything I want? Well, I went through this too. And it, isn't just, it just isn't a valid concern. Your chart stays the same, but, be, but becomes more intensive. 
and your involvement with people and their needs becomes imperative in your life. Now, I think this is a really important part. I'm going to stop here just for a second because, you know, I get this all the time when I do readings. Is those of you who are new here, you may not know, I am a full-time professional psychic, uh, and I do readings every day. And a lot of times people come to me and they say, well, Psyche Bob, why should I live a spiritual life? Why should I be good to you? Why should I believe in God? They say, you know, my next door neighbor, they're evil and mean as cuss, and they've got a brand new Mercedes and a million dollar home. Well, you know, see, this is the thing is that it's true in this world, evil people thrive, okay? But that doesn't mean that they'll always thrive because down the road, a lot of these people who attack and murder people and do all this craziness to make their money and their power and success never last. And, you know, I think this is a really good point here because when you take on the mantle of a mystical travel, you're saying, God, I'm going to let you work through me. And so when you do that, your life will change, you know. And don't be afraid. Honestly, I think Sylvia is so right here. Don't be afraid of letting that happen to you. Now, some of you, as I've told you before in previous classes, you already know you're being called to be a mystical traveler. And there are also some of you here saying, you know what, Bob, I don't think that's for me. And that's okay, too, because you can still be a good person, make spiritual advancement. But taking on the, the mantle of a mystical traveler is a very serious commitment, and it does require an openness to God. Um, so let's go on and see what else Sylvia says, okay? Now, when you become a mystical traveler, the role can, can, this is the, op, the optimum word, override your life themes, which are detailed at the end of this chapter. We're going to go into all that in another class, but um, anyways, everybody, as I've told you before, you've come here with a mission, with a life theme, and, and those themes you choose before you're born, okay? Okay, so, uh, the role can override your life themes so that they may no longer have as much impact on your chart. For example, my themes are humanitarian and loner. Yet, when I took on the mantle, the loner theme fell away, but the humanitarian theme became more and more accelerated. I still am who I am with my chart intact, but being a mystical traveler accentuated everything. Remember that I didn't become one until I was 50. And then all of a sudden, speaking engagements cropped up. I wrote my first book, and I began going on lecture tours to the tune of 30 or 40 a year. Okay. Now, see, this is really important because, you know, some of you may say, well, I don't feel ready to become a mystical traveler. Am I too young or too old? Age doesn't matter, but... You know, I have been doing psyche work, and like Sylvia, I didn't take it till later. I didn't become a mystical traveler until I was 40. I'm 50 now, so I've been one for only 10 years. Even though I've been doing psyche work for many years, that role, you know, when you take on is a much bigger step. Because at 40, I left the corporate world, and I devoted my whole life to doing spiritual work. And I've never had to look back, nor will I ever. So this is really important that you don't enter into it lightly because when you do, it is going to be a major life transition for you, okay? So you want to think about it. And, and yeah, you know, like Sylvia, Sylvia was a world-famous psych for many years, even before that. And she didn't take on the travel, the mantle of mystical traveler until she was 50. So, you know, but once you do that, everything changes, you know? And she goes on, she writes, However, I still followed my track. I remain a mother and a grandmother. I live in the same place and I have the same staff. I go shopping, take care of my dogs, eat with my friends, enjoy crafts, and so on. What I'm trying to show here is that I am still Sylvia, but now I am more the Sylvia who's on Montel, writing, giving lectures, and doing. And she emphasizes doing. And I think that's really true because a mystical traveler isn't just some title. You don't just say, oh, I'm a mystical traveler. Look how important I am. Mystical traveler is a work. Like, you know, like as I told you, when I took on the mantle of mystical traveler 40, I was working a full 40-hour week job and then doing another 40 hours in private readings. 
And, uh, you know, it was a lot of work. And eventually I said, you know what? The Spirit really is calling me. And I got so many signs. And so, you know, it's really important when you're thinking about being a mystical traveler. You know, you don't have to just do this alone. You know, check in with your spiritual teachers. Check in with your spirit guides. Check in with your higher self. And, of course, most of all, check in with God. You see, or Goddess. However you define the divine. Okay? you got to give your yeah. All right. So let's go on here. Um, if you become a mystical traveler, do you have to start a church and preach unto the heavens? No, but you will be called on as a witness to our all loving creators and must bear that witness to the world. That is why I say if you pay close attention, you'll be able to pick out mystical travelers. Such souls leave good lives as an example to all, in addition to doing many great works. So, if you're aware enough, you can spot them in everyday life. I want to pause there just for a second because, you know, as my mom has been in the nursing home, I've had a great privilege of actually witnessing mystical travelers there. Um, I don't want to give their names out because they might see this video, but they know who they are. But I know there's one lady there, an older lady, and she has such a beautiful light around her. And she works with all the people and makes sure they have everything they need. And I don't know if she's a volunteer or staff, but she's there every day. And this lady is truly an amazing person. And I've met and talked to so many of the nurses there and the, the uh, help staff. And a lot of them work late hours, they work overtime, sometimes they don't even get paid for the extra hours, and they just love the people. I've watched all of them, and I'll tell you, if you want to learn what a mystical traveler is like, go visit a nursing home. Just stay and watch the people that serve the people there that are healing. You will see some amazing and beautiful souls there, and it will really uplift you. So I, you know, was very humbled and very inspired by the staff that had been helping my mom and helping throughout that nursing home. It's really something, you know. All right, so I had to throw my two cents in there. <clears throat> oh, by the way, also, just to, to also finish, uh, like Sylvia said, do you have to start a church? No, you don't. Uh, well, as many of you know, I started a spirit channel. I also started the Order of the Purple Cord. But that was my calling. And if you don't feel called to do a, a big group effort, that's okay. You be present wherever you are. And you can do your work as a mystical traveler. Okay. She goes on, she writes, There are several ministers in my church. And her church is the Society of Novus Spiritus. Such as Lauren and Virginia in my Seattle branch who were mystical travelers before they ever heard of the moniker. One always recognizes another. So I definitely recognize John and Gloria Amon, as well as many other members of my Campbell, California branch. Some took the oath and moved away, but they'll always carry it with them, no matter where they go. For example, one person went on to write a spiritual book, while another pursued a technological career and brought light to everyone. Now, I'm not just talking about my ministers here, but rather some wonderful lay people who once attended our church and went out into the world with their mantle and made it a better place. See, so, you know, you don't have to become an ordained priest or minister to be a mystical traveler. And in fact, as Sylvia said earlier in this book, Many people that are ministers are still not mystical travelers, you know. All right, let's go on. Although taking on such a mantle requires that mystical travelers give up their will as part of their commitment to mother and father God, that commitment can take on several different forms. It seems that almost all advanced entities have specialties or fields of endeavor that are close to what they describe as passions. One isn't greater than another. Some mystical travelers take on more than one of these passions, and many specialties seem to intertwine with one another. However, for informational purposes, all mystical travelers generally fall into one or more of the following categories. Caretakers, cause fighters, healers, humanitarians, 
prophets or psychics or rescuers. All of these are noble pursuits and benefit humankind in one way or another. Now, let's just stop there because a, there's a lot of information in there. As many of you know, when you sit with me for a private reading, you know, we always talk about your life themes. And life themes are not, uh, you know, we all come in with them. It's a universal truth. So it's not something rare. It's not like, oh, do I have a life thing? Everybody has a life thing. You have a life thing. And those of you sat with me and said, I'm not sure about my life thing. Many of you, we've been able to talk about that. And some of you have even told me you were wondering if you're mystical travelers. And I was able to confirm that you were. Now, these are interesting life things because Sylvia defines them as caretakers. I would definitely say the people at the nursing home are caretakers. Uh, cause fighters. These are our activists. These are people that say, you know what? There is a wrong in the world and we're going to right it. Okay, I know a lot of these type as well. Wonderful people. And for those of you who know, especially with the targeted individual program that's going on in this country, there are a lot of people literally laying their lives on the line to be cause fighters. God bless them all, I'm telling you. The healers, okay, we know a lot of healers. And a lot of you do Reiki and you've studied physical healing and spiritual healing. Wonderful. Humanitarians, uh, well, you know what that is. People who care about the world, they take up causes for social justice. Prophets or psychics. Ooh. Now, let me clarify here. Not everybody who claims to be a prophet or a psychic is a mystical traveler. So be careful there because... As, you know, even Jesus said, there are a lot of false prophets in the world out there talking craziness. So you have to be very discerning, okay, with who you deal with. And rescuers. Now, rescuers are interesting things. A lot of these are people that work for, like, you know, the ambulance service, that work for medical places, that emergency care. These are rescuers. But rescuers can also be people, for example, that rescue animals. I know people who are animal rights activists and they go to homes and rescue abused animals. I think that's a beautiful way to live your life, you know, because remember the animals are here on a journey as well. And, you know, as I've been spending so much time with my mom's little dog, Grizzly, I've really got to know the spirit of this dog and he is a loving person. And, you know, the thought of him being in a home where he would not be loved, it's just more than I can bear. So God bless the rescuers, especially those who help animals, okay? All of this, she said, all of these are noble pursuits and benefit humankind in one way or another, okay? We'll go and read a little more. These are the Mother Teresa types who rescue, care for, heal, and help those in dire need. If nothing else, they let people who are suffering die with dignity. These are the individuals who run hospices for children, the elderly, and the sick and dying. These are the men and women who start foundations and provide housing and care for the homeless. These are the healers, doctors, nurses, and counselors, and even those who do the laying on of hands or holistic work. These are the individuals who foretell future events and give out information that's infused from God to help others make better decisions and live their best lives. These are also the folks who raise their voices against injustice, such as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Abraham Lincoln, and the like. Wow, I tell you, see, so if you take on being a mystical traveler, you're running in pretty big circles. That's big shoes to fill. So that's why, you know, I say, and Sylvia says, it, don't rush into it. You don't have to rush. You can go through your whole life and not take on that man and still be an awesome person and still go to heaven, you know. But, you know, for those of you, as we've said in past classes, some of you are saying, you know what, I'm going through my day-to-day -day life, but I know there's more. And that's where the mystical traveler comes in, okay. All of these works are done every single day by inhabitants of our world, and they are all manifestations of God through their creations. Out of the millions who have done and do these good deeds, you'll find mystical travelers interspersed with them, within them. Some are easy to recognize, like those mentioned above, but most won't become famous because that's not what they seek. If they do become well-known, it's generally a direct effect 
of the huge impact they've made on so many lives. Such advanced souls seem to come into this life for a singular purpose, and that's to positively change the world. No matter how small that change may be, it still makes a difference. Let's say, for instance, that there are two parents to whom the general public is unaware of, but they foster the spirituality to raise the mystical traveler. That in itself puts them on the level of being mystical travelers. Their, name may not be, their names may not be in lights, but they go about their daily lives planting columns, planting light columns of spirituality, often without knowing it, simply because they're good people. Let's stop there just a second. Now, you remember last week we talked about planting columns of light, and Sylvia, I think, is one of her best teachings, and, and I practice it myself, is that when you go someplace, especially, you know, like when you go someplace where there's a lot of suffering, um, visualize a beautiful column of light, beautiful sparkling silver, white or silver, gold, or however, you, what color you like, but a sparkling column of brilliant light, and just place it somewhere. Because everybody who walks through that column, it won't stop their movement, but as they walk through it, they'll get infused in their soul with blessing. And so when I was at the nursing home, you know, I would go through the halls and I would see some of these rooms, and I would put plant columns of light in the rooms so that the people could receive healing power. And that's a very simple and non-obtrusive and wonderful way to do a spiritual work. You're not forcing anybody to believe what you believe. You're not, you know, being dogmatic. You're just simply opening a channel that if people want to receive a blessing, they can. And I think that's very powerful. And I'm very thankful to Sylvia for teaching about that because I had never heard of that until she taught it. And I actually learned it from her many years ago. And it's, it's nice she's bringing it back up in this book again. But, uh, you know, you might want to think about that as part of your mystical traveler work. Start every day just going through the world and wherever you see pain or sorry. You might be walking down the street. You know, like I lived in a neighborhood one time where um, there was a girl who lived upstairs from me. And she was in an abusive relationship. She used to come down and hang out with me. And her boyfriend beat her. And I'd have to call the police. And one day she asked me to come up and see her house. She said, Bob, I don't know what to do. Look what he's done. And I went up to her apartment. And this guy had smashed her furniture. He took a chair, busted it through the walls. He was literally crazy. And I said to her, I said, "Hun, I said, you got you to gotta get out of here because he's dangerous. And she said, are you the one who called the police? And I said, yes, I did. I said, it was to save you. She said, I'm so glad you did. I was too scared. And so I said to her, well, you know, we're going to raise the vibration in this place. And so what we did was we walked through all the rooms. And she told me where she had... He yelled at her, he attacked her, and I put columns of light in each of those areas. And I said, whenever you feel scared, you walk through this area, and now you're going to get a blessing. And you know what happened? Literally, that week, the end of that week, he just left. And I asked her, I said, what happened? She said, I don't know. She said, he came in, he said, I can't be here. Well, you see those columns of light that we planted. That was too high vibrational. Evil people, see, don't like the light. So they're going to flee it. So when you put those columns of light, you never know you might be saving somebody's life. And I, I'm not saying this to brag. I think I saved that girl's life because I was there for her. She, she said, I know you don't. And the first time she came to my house, she came down. Just She saw me on the steps and and she'd been crying. And I brought her into my house and my roommate at the time. And we sat and made tea for her and talked to her. And she said, I don't even know you guys. I'm sorry, I'm here crying in your living room. We said, no, no, that's all right. But see, I knew she had been being abused. And we went in, we blessed that apartment. And those columns of light made him leave. So don't underestimate it. It's very powerful and it'll change lives. All right, oops, where did we lose? I lost my spot here. Um, okay, hold on a second. It's like Bob can't remember where he is. There's so much here, to, so much good stuff that really is. Um, mystical travelers always end up being great teachers, oftentimes just by living exemplary lives.
Along with many occupations that they might take on, these entities can also be leaders of people, but usually in what we call a quiet way. Their leadership tends to be more behind the scenes, most likely through spoken or written words. They're never self-aggrandizing or full of greed, avarice, or jealousy, but they do fight against the false prophets or authorities who dole out erroneous, harmful, or even silly or fantastic information to gather followers. Now I'm going to have to stop right there because you guys may well remember those of you who've been here a long time. Back in 20, end of 2011, there was all this hype about 2012, and a lot of psychics were making a lot of money. They said the end of the world's coming in 2012. There's going to be cataclysms, and everybody better get ready. And a lot of them went on a tour circuit and made a lot of money preaching about 2012, get ready, it's the end of the world. Well, I got so many calls at my office during that time. And people call me up in a pan and say, Psychic Bob, I went and saw a psychic and he said, it's the end of the world. What do I do? How do I prepare for this? What's going to happen? Is, there gonna, you know, is California going to fall off into the sea? And I checked in with my spirit people and I said, what is all this about? I'm not getting this message. Am I missing it? And I got a clear message from the spirit world. And they said, none of it's going to happen. Don't worry about it. So I started telling people, don't be afraid. It's not going to happen. What I was told that 2012 was really about was it was an alignment of planets in such a way that it would encourage spiritual growth. You could make more accelerated growth, which did happen for many people. But this cataclysm and drama, this was all false prophecy. And as a mystical traveler, I could not condone it. And so, you know, Psyche Bob could have made a lot of money. I could have done these tours with a lot of these high-profile psychics. I was actually asked to go on some tours. And I said, I don't believe that. I'm not going to teach that. You know, and I sacrificed money, but I stand in truth. And I, you know, and I told people, I said, come January 1st, 2012, Psyche Bob's still going to be here doing what he always does. And those prophets, those false prophets, those false psychics, they're all going to be out of business. And guess what? Most of them, the people were so angry at that they never went back to them. And they said, gee, Psyche Bob, you're the only one who told us the truth. And it's the truth. I, I, you know, I'm not in this for the money. As many of you know, I don't have a fortune. I'm not wealthy. But it is a calling. And so, I, you know, I'm not in it. If I wanted to make money, I could have. And I chose not to because it wasn't right. So, you know, that's also part of my work as a mystical traveler. Let's go on. Sylvia writes, The mystical traveler mantle really puts a fire in your belly. But along with what seems, with that, it seems that you gain endurance and joy. Yes, you can also be hurt by the lying skeptics who try to defame you. But the delight of your love affair with the world makes all the hateful naysayers go away. I talk more about dealing with the skeptics in Chapter 8. I'm going to stop there just for a second because, you know, some of you have been so shocked at some of the things you've seen on YouTube. You know, some people can behave. Well, I've had my share of haters over the years. I've been attacked by churches and ministers to I'm not evil. I've had assaults on my character, all of that. But you know what? It's really true. When you're a mystical traveler, all of that just runs off you. You know, and people say, well, aren't you going to fight these people? Aren't you going to? I said, well, I'm here to be a mystical traveler. I'm here to teach and share my spiritual truth. And I don't have time for that. I don't have time for the drama. Now, some of you who are starting out on YouTube, you've written to me and you said, Psyche Bob, I'm trying to do a YouTube channel. I'm so hurt by the hateful things people are writing. You gotta, you gotta get a thick skin because you know these people want to dominate and destroy. You don't have time for that. If you keep your focus on your mission, your calling, your spiritual truth, they have no power over you. People say, how did you make it all these 10 years? Psyche Bob? A lot of people start YouTube channels and then they got upset and quit YouTube because of the hate. YouTube actually, you know, is probably one of the platforms where I've seen the most hate in my life. Because there are a lot of keyboard warrior trolls out there who are self-righteous and think they want to just hate on everybody. And it's very sad. But this is the state of the world. And you know, Sylvia said it, it's a dark world we're living in. But you know, when you're a mystical traveler, you have such joy about your world. You don't care. I do not care. I get up every day and I say, hey, let the haters hate. Psycho like Bob's still here and I'll be here long after they're gone. So remember that, okay? 
Don't be afraid of that. And Sylvia goes on, she writes, it's interesting to note that uh, each of the groups I mentioned a few pages back is also a life theme, but that doesn't necessarily make everyone who's taken on the themes of caretaker, cause fighter, healer, humanitarian, psychic, or rescuer, mystical travelers. However, I do feel that it's helpful to list all the themes here. In this way, you can familiarize yourself with them as well as more easily understand the type of person who would be attracted to becoming a mystical traveler. Again, I must stress that we're all equal in God's eyes, so no theme is better than any other. Now see, let me just pause there. This is important because sometimes when I tell people in a private reading their life theme, they said, oh, someone get this point. I said, oh, well, I thought I was a rescuer theme. Now you're telling me I'm a healer theme. And I'll say, that's no less honorable than a rescuer. You're, you know, in your healing, you're rescuing people from worse fates. And so we have to remember, don't get jealous. If you, you know, call your friend and say, well, Sagi Bob told me that I'm a leadership theme. And they said, well, I'm a healer theme. doesn't mean a leader is higher or more powerful. It's a different focus. So all the themes are equal. And you can still be a wonderful mystical traveler. So I think we're going to stop there for right today because the next section goes into 47 themes, life themes of humanity. We're going to start that. We'll do that next Saturday. But as I said, I'm going to keep today a little shorter than normal. Uh, I'm not going to do the channeling today because I've got to go do stuff with mom while she's here. and They've let her out. She's on day release from her prison. But she's, I'm glad she's here. And uh, mom, did you enjoy listening to this today? Was yes, this I did. Wonderful. Mom likes Sylvia, too. You used to watch Sylvia on Montel, didn't you, Mom? Yes, I did. Yeah, so we're our family's big fans of Sylvia. Anyways, you know, Sylvia, she's been such an influence. on she, Her work inspired me to move forward in my life because I knew that I had these abilities all my life. And when I joined the Spiritualist Church, you know, it really helped me confirm it and bring it out. And so I'm very fortunate to, to have had Sylvia's influence. And uh, <laughs> little Grizzly's here. Look at Hi, this. Baby. Hi, baby. There he is. He's so happy, Mom. So, all right, guys. So, listen, we're going to wrap it up. Thank you for being here. If you didn't see last night's video, check that. We had UFO Friday. I didn't get it out till late. We talked about the esoteric order of Dagon and the alien connection. So, you might want to check that out. Uh, but, listen, uh, I need your help, you know. <laughs> Hold on a second. Um, I need your help here because, you know, YouTube has been harassing a lot of YouTubers and trying to get them to shut down their channels and strip their revenues. Say to YouTube that you support Psyche Bob by liking this video, favoriting it, share it with your friends, and please hit subscribe, join our channel. I'd love you to be here. And, you know, if you get a chance and you're bored, pop over to my website. You can read about my readings there excuse me, as well as my own books. I'm a published author, and I have a number of books in my bookstore. So when you go there, there's a bookstore tab, books tab. Just click on that, and you can see all my books and order them there. So, you know, you might want to check it out. And if you get some time today and you don't have this book, pop over also to Amazon or eBay and get a copy of this, because we're going to be going through this each Saturday. Guys, thank you for being here. I love all of you. Thank you for your love and support. For those who have been calling for readings, we've got a little bit of backlog. We are still getting to you, so not to worry. Uh, you will be hearing from my scheduling coordinator in the next day. Uh, so I haven't forgotten you, okay? And I thank all of you, and I'm looking forward to, to being with each of you. All right, keep it here at Spirit Show. Tomorrow is, what's tomorrow? Sunday. <gasps> that means the witching hour. You don't want to miss it. Be here at Spirit Show, 8 p.m. Eastern for a live broadcast. We're going to answer your questions about Wicca, and I look forward to seeing you. Until then, may you always blessed be.